All right, so I'm trying to platinum over 130 of the best single player story games ever made that were suggested by viewers of the channel. And if I can't do it before hitting 800,000 subscribers, I will yet again lose another platinum challenge. So make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with a new challenge. I decided to kick off the first real video in the challenge with the very first Resident Evil game that came out way back in 1996 and has since been remastered or remade um, like more than once, I think. It's a bit confusing, but somehow it's playable on the PS5 in 2024, which is actually insane if you think about it. Shout out Japan, we love you. But the game is actually extremely hard to platinum, and in my opinion, that's mostly due to just how it plays. This game has a very old style, and most of the time, you can't see enemies in front of you, and also just run in circles when the camera switches, but we'll get to that. There is a total of 45 trophies, including the platinum for Resident Evil, taking on average 6 playthroughs to complete in around 30 hours. Which is, if you don't mess up at all, and I did this was expected. But the first step to the Platinum is to try and do the knife only run with Chris on very easy so you are not allowed to use any guns, the lighter to burn enemies, or even defensive weapons which are insanely helpful and we can't use them at all. While playing, it is also advised to go for some missable trophies here and there, but we will touch on those while playing. So the whole plot for Resident Evil begins when your STARS task force is sent off into the woods to find Bravo Team who has gone missing in the middle of their mission. What mission you might be asking? Well, there has been reports of people going lost in the woods and being eaten. A little bit blunt, but we don't have time to dilly-dally. Anyways, they found the helicopter on the ground, so everyone decided it's a great idea to land right next to it and then investigate. So we did just that. But then we got attacked by rabid dogs, and these things are one of the most annoying enemies in the game to fight, so I understand why we just ran away to very conveniently placed that abandoned mansion right next to us that is also still fully powered up. Kind of a weird combo, but that's okay. We are the law and we do what we want. So now that we are inside of the mansion, the rest of the game basically just has us search it. Like, that's the entire premise. You just search the whole place trying to find your friends who are lost inside. And since this was my first playthrough, I was also going in blind, and this would end up becoming a bad way to play because I spent 15 minutes in the intro just running around having no idea where to go. I'm not even lying. But eventually I did find the place I was supposed to go, and we also found our first friend. He's dead. So we had to take care of the zombie that killed him, and he was also munching on the brother. Once I finally took him out after 23 knife strikes, I would end up getting my first trophy of the day. I then wandered around more since I was still doing a blind playthrough for the first time. And I was also very low on health because I hadn't yet really understood how the combat works. So the very next enemy did indeed uh, kill me, and yeah, that's sad. But I did get a trophy from it, so it's a W, I guess. On my next playthrough, I was again very confused on what to do, but I found some key in this upstairs room, and after reading the prompt it gave me, I kind of felt like I shouldn't grab it. But my curiosity got the best of me, and I watched as my character slowly got crushed to death. Some say he was too curious. Some say he just has zero natural instinct. But I say, shout out to this guy who made all these wonderful guides for this game. Let's get married. So yeah, I finally started following the guide a little bit, because dude, I was so lost, and I got really tired of running around having no idea what was happening. But during this running around time that I was still doing even with the guide, I ended up battling an enemy called a Crimson Head. These are zombies that you have previously killed who come back all mutated like, and this is also a random event. But I swear every zombie I fought came back and I'm concluding that they just love coming. Anyways, I eventually got a special key I needed to open some more important doors, and I walked in on Richard and Rebecca who are two people we get sent here with. Rebecca is some doctor lady and Richard is just dying. Yeah, he is the side character who's gonna die in this game sadly. But there's a missable trophy right here from getting serum from a safe zone across the map and bringing it back within five minutes or else sadly Richard here will pass on to the other side. So I quickly ran over to the safe zone, grabbed the serum, and then ran back. And after Rebecca patched up Richard, we all teleported to that same safe zone and I got a trophy from it. Quite a bit later, I finally gathered all four of the death masks that you have to find and also take down to the crypt in order to summon or spawn in this game's first boss fight. It's against some red crimson head guy, again, but he's like the leader of them all. So strong they shoved him into a coffin and hanged it in the air. Kind of a weird burial process, but sh I might want that. It's low-key kind of sick. Anyways, the fight is not sick. In fact, I died. But only once actually before finally getting it. And this is how most boss fights are gonna go sadly because I have to knife them all and that's just so much fun. I already despise the person who made this trophy list. They are the real evil in this residency. But yeah, I did get a trophy from beating this guy for the first time right here. And after completing that first boss fight, we also got given a special item that is one half of the two stone mechanisms we need to complete the game. However, the second one isn't gotten until the very ending. But in terms of time and the story length, that first part of the game getting out of the mansion for the first time is by far the the longest overall. And we then went to like the courtyard is what they call it next alongside with the residence that is apart from the mansion. And you don't really do anything with the courtyard right now because it's blocked off with a waterfall, but you can go past it and just go to the residence next to the mansion, which also holds like some water treatment thing. It's really weird. And I have no clue what damn billionaire built this place, but there was an entire underground shark lair and we had to like drain it and stuff, which was also kind of stressful. But once we did, all the sharks were kind of dying out of water. However, we did have to speed up the process by pushing this electronic unit onto one and flipping the power on 
to shock it to death. I also got a trophy from that, so that's cool. But in order to leave the residence, we needed to find a key that has gotten from defeating the Plant 42 boss. And this is the Plant 42 boss, by the way. Just a giant ass plant with arms and ends that spit out at you and kill you. The best way to defeat this boss is to make some chemical compound that instantly kills it. However, in order to do that, you have to be playing as the girl character, and the game straight up just says no. You are a man, you are dumb, and you can't make it. So we have to do this fight the hard way, and it's even harder using a knife since you have to time up hits on the arms when they are peeking over your reach. And for the last two or three, you also have to just try and hit them off screen half the time. It's just horrible. I spent over 30 minutes here dying many times and just overall losing my mind. Eventually though, I did get it in a trophy along with feelings of success. So now that we have the key we came for, it's time to head back to the mansion for part two of three inside of the mansion. And now that we return with an inflated swagger, however, this game sends in these new enemies called hunters. They kind of look like frogs if they grew six feet tall and took as much steroids as the Paul brothers combined, but killing them is awful, especially with a knife. However, once you do get one down for the first time, you get a trophy from doing just that. This second part of the mansion has us mostly going after these two items, the eagle and wolf metal. Both of them are needed to open an area to the ending of the game, and one of them you get from a snake boss fight, which actually isn't that bad compared to the other boss fights in this game. It's more just really annoying, primarily because you can't really hide from the snake and kind of almost have to just grow big nuts to face it head on, since that's the best way in my opinion. I also did it first try with a knife, so if that doesn't say everything you need to know about this thing's real difficulty, I don't know what will. Also, you get a trophy from the fight, which is so cool. Hey, yo! And right before leaving the mansion for the second time, you have to run upstairs real fast and save Rebecca from a hunter. Kind of sad though, like the girl could have just opened the door right behind her and ran away, but fine, fine, I'll be the hero I was meant to be. Once taking out the hunter, she also confesses her deep love for Asiago sourdough bread before I fear the trophy pops from saving her. During the second time leaving the mansion, you then head down through the waterfall of the courtyard to some underground cave section. Overall, this area is complete ass and very, very annoying. Thankfully, we were on the easiest difficulty, so most of the annoying parts you can just run through, which I did. And the whole point of us going down here is to just find this little box at the very end that holds the last item we need to open the altar. Once we get back to the altar and open it, you also get sent right on down to a boss fight against this enemy named Lisa, or the homeless woman outside of my nearby Domino's Pizza Place. But before anything else, you should never try to actually fight this bitch since she cannot die to normal means. Like literally, you cannot actually kill her. You instead have to push all of these stones off the platform and she performs a Kermit as we call it. I also got a trophy from that fight, which is dope. So now we are in the final area called the lab, basically. Here's where the Umbrella Corporation has been cooking up evil creations and also just overall annoying ass enemies. We did also have to put all of the ammo discs in their respectable places, which are used to unlock a door and free our last friend down here. This is an optional trophy, by the way, but since it's suggested, we did do it. And it also made this section way longer than it should be. But essentially we just had to repower up the place and then we turned on the elevators which took us down to the big boy lab and also here was where Whisker who was a part of the good guys would end up being exposed as evil and his own creation killed him which is ironically funny. This fight against the tyrant by the way which is what this monster is called was kind of AIDS however not impossible and I did it with a knife after a few moments of wanting to end it all. I then made my way out of the place and I didn't know we had to also go back to the cell where our friend was to let them out. I kind of just assumed they would run. Rookie mistake. Because upon completing the game's final fight I would only receive two trophies. One for beating the game as Chris and another for beating the game without saving anyone, which was a mistake. I meant to save everyone. I'm sorry. Look at him in grief therapy, here we come. After the credits, we also got to the game's conclusion screen and I got another two trophies, one for beating it on very easy and another for the knife only, which I was very scared wouldn't pop. However, it did. And if you thought I was lying about how much I ran around for, here is how long that run took me. Yup, a full day shift. Jesus Christ. Okay, so next before more playthroughs, I went back and redid the ending of that playthrough, but actually saving everyone this time and not letting them all die. You get two trophies for this also. First for going down and grabbing the friend of ours, and another for completing the final fight with both of our friends with us. So now it's time for playthrough number two with Jill on normal mode. I did this, but I actually didn't put it on normal because I was confused with how the difficulty works since they don't just tell you easy, normal, hard. They give you a goddamn riddle for it. But aside from that inconvenience, the Jill playthrough while going for every item in the game isn't bad at all. And it's actually a little bit different than the Chris one, and in my opinion, it's easier to do because Jill can carry more items and also open more doors easily with her lockpick. But I did get multiple trophies throughout it from trophies relating to her this time. First from grabbing a shotgun that was on display and then triggering the trap that would kill us after taking it. However, our boy Barry here jumps in to save us and we got a trophy from that. I also got another one after I burned my first enemy in this game. This is to prevent them from coming back and it also makes you feel like a superior being. So yeah, here's that trophy. And a while later, I ended up getting two zombies downed in a close by area. So I tried to get a double burn for a trophy 
trophy, and it actually worked, which gave me a trophy from burning two zombies at once. I also fought that snake in the attic, which is the first fight against the snake. However, this time, instead of running away like I did in the Chris playthrough, I just sat here and shot it a little bit until it ran away from me, which was a trophy. I then made my way to the final boss of the mansion part one and took down that guy in the crypt much easier this time with guns getting a trophy from doing it with Jill this time. I also got to do that chemical kill easy way against the plant 42 boss with Jill because she actually can do it and this fight lasted like less than a minute because once we walked in we won and after I picked up the key from the fight I got a trophy from getting that key playing as Jill. Next trophy was then from fighting the snake in the library again and after beating it with Jill this time we got another trophy from fighting it with her. Down in the caves I also fought the spider boss and this time instead of running away like I did with Chris I fought it, killed it, and got a trophy from it. Right before the Lisa battle we also got posed with giving Barry his gun back or not. Barry was kind of a bit suspicious throughout this playthrough by the way. I can't really tell if he's our friend or he's a traitor. Anyways if you do give it to him you get this trophy so I did. I then made it to the final area of the game with Jill and got a trophy from just simply doing that which is cool. And this time we got to save Chris instead of Jill because we were playing as Jill. See how it just flipped him? Yeah that's cool I would say. And upon making it to the very last fight I also received the Nooks and Cranny trophy for grabbing every single item in the game. Honestly kind of a pain in the ass but once I finished the fight I again got two trophies as the cutscenes were playing and then two more once I watched the credits and look I shaved off like two hours from my time how nice so the next day just do the real survivor with Jill however I accidentally deleted my previous save with Chris so I didn't have enough playthroughs to unlock the real survivor mode so I just had to replay it again on normal like I was supposed to earlier but with Jill and this was more of me just practicing for the speedrun trophy I got absolutely nothing dreamed by the way until the very end when I finished and my first trophy was from saving nobody with Jill that cold-hearted bitch I then got two more during the credits first for the normal mode completion and secondly for finishing in under five hours. I was also almost under the three hour speedrun time which is needed in addition. So now I had enough completed playthroughs on my save slots to unlock the real survivor mode and I did that next with Jill like the guide said to from the start and oh my god this is supposed to be the hardest mode but I honestly didn't find too much trouble with it. Then again I did run away from like everything but you kind of have to to be honest and I also was trying to do this as fast as I could to avoid having another playthrough for the speedrun. Anyways you get zero trophies upon beating the game but after getting past the credits I got the real survivor trophy and the hard mode trophy but look at that time bro three hours and 14 seconds i was literally 15 seconds off of the speedrun trophy and i did it on real survivor mode seeing this i was at first a bit pissed off but then i remembered wait i had a save slot in the final area so i just reloaded it and speed ran the ending even faster finishing it again with a time that was one minute faster and popping me that glorious three hour speedrun trophy in addition masterclass if i do say so for myself so the next playthrough i tried to do was the invisible enemy one with chris and i also tried to do it without saving which was a big mistake but while doing it i got a missable trophy from saving chris with rebecca at one point in the attic fighting the snake you have to let it poison you then you take over playing as rebecca having to run to that safe room with the serum and back saving chris in the same way we saved richard for this trophy pop anyways i ended up dying in the invisible playthrough to some dumb shit but i did find the last weapon i needed for the all weapons obtained trophy right here and it was just a flamethrower that i thought was wall decoration in my other playthroughs yeah i'm an idiot so instead of doing the no save playthrough on invisible mode i just did it on very easy while using the infinite ammo rocket launcher and boy oh boy was that just insanely easier so yeah i did an entire playthrough only using the rocket launcher and it was honestly a lot of fun so there is the no save trophy pop and i did that in two hours and 26 minutes which isn't too shabby if i do say so for myself i then just did one more playthrough as chris on invisible enemy mode and side note this mode is cancer but it is what we signed up for so i won't complain about how annoying it is that is kind of the point of the mode anyways once i completed it i got two trophies first for the invisible enemy mode completed and second a few minutes after for unlocking all the outfits in the game. This is done from beating it twice with both Chris and Jill and having the save slots on the same file, which I, you know, deleted some earlier, so that sucks. I then received the Platinum Trophy pop after, and that was the Resident Evil Platinum Trophy experience. Overall, the game is honestly super fun, and I can imagine it being absolutely god tier back in the 90s, but personally, for me, the style was a bit annoying. I understand that it's kind of just the way the game is, but damn, that camera swapping still had me going insane after six playthroughs, which is just crazy. However, putting Resident Evil in out of 10, I'm gonna give it a solid 7. Still a very fun game, especially considering it's over 25 years old, which is well older than I am, and that's absolutely insane. And um, yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one with another banger coming very soon. So turn on your post notifications. <laughs> God, I'm such a fucking retard.